What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Insurrection Inc. podcast. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoy the show. Hey guys, Jay here. Just wanted to remind you that we have a Discord. You can come talk to us, recommend show topics, discuss episodes, and have fun. The link will be in the show notes, and enjoy the show. Uh, hello, and welcome to Insurrection Inc. Today we have a very special episode where the hosts, it, it's very skeleton crew, it's just me, Andrew, and Tim, and we are here to discuss Andrew's experiences over the last couple of weeks. Why don't you tell the folks where you've been if they don't listen to our After hour segments? Um, okay, so uh, two weeks ago now, I was punished by the gods uh, and given COVID. Um, Specifically by the Demiurge. Yes. yes. That's some like esoteric knowledge, though. I was trying to keep it simple. <laughs> but uh, I got COVID, and not the good kind. Not like the kind <laughs> that people... Like there's, there's, I've, I've denoted that there's three kinds of COVID, right? There's the asymptomatic, which is... I mean, it's not... I, I haven't deducted this. It's, it's public knowledge. But <laughs> there's the asymptomatic, where people just kind of walk around with it, and like they're fine. Um, there's the ones who get like, it's like a mild inconvenience for them, right? It's a flu, mm-hmm. basically. It's, it's not even, it's like a cold, but like 10 times easier than a cold. Basically a sinus infection, uh, without the sinuses. So it's even easier than that. Uh, and then there's the people like me who, uh, just get absolutely beat up by it. I got the worst <laughs> possible strain of it. <laughs> um, the only reason I did not die is because it did not have pre-existing like conditions. It was bad. It was not fun. I had COVID. Uh, that's that's where I was. That's why I wasn't on a couple episodes that that y'all recorded. That's why I didn't go to Auburn at Mises uh, to hang out with the boys. Unfortunately, that's why those of you who follow my Instagram, uh, why I disappeared for about three or four days that weekend. Uh, it was a mix between. Uh, emotional distraught from a whole bunch of stuff happening that week um and of course then covid was still happening to me over that weekend and i just kind of needed a break from everything um i i was told i need to talk about my experience with it so i guess i'll start with day one <laughs> and go through the process just in case like for both for uh episode's oh, uh, sake and maybe, uh, maybe maybe it's also interesting to ask how do you think you got it i don't know bro someone Walmart. I mean, my mom had it the week before, and I went to her house oh, once. Uh, so it's very likely I got it there. But I also work at a place where I'm talking to people all the time, like face to face. I'm at a cash register handling money. So there's no telling where I got it from. But most likely, culprit was well, my mother. Alabama only passed a mask mandate what last week? Were you forced to wear a mask for your business already, or no? Uh, no, I was not. Uh, do you think they, a mask? Do you think a mask would have helped you? Again, I have no idea because I don't know where I got it from. I likely got it from my mom, but I mean, I think it was bound to happen regardless if I wore a mask or not. I was going to get it eventually. Um, it was just a cosmic destiny. Yeah, that's yeah, punishment. Um, <laughs> uh, but again, that's some more esoteric stuff that we might talk about in another episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can always keep going on like this being the next inside joke that we just use esoteric references all the time it's gonna be annoying as fuck uh so day one it was uh um so it, it's happened like pretty much throughout the span of just an easy seven days uh so that monday of that week uh like i felt a little off but it wasn't that bad so i was like you know what? it's probably just like a, a one day thing you know so you just kind of wake up on the wrong side of the bed uh but not the side that makes you angry the side that makes you feel awful um So then, of course, I didn't go to work that day, so I didn't think about it anyway. I just did my normal thing and did nothing. Um, So the next day, I woke up. I had a slight fever, like very slight, 99, 100, nothing crazy. Um, But I didn't have a thermometer at the time. Uh, So I just we kind of just guessed based on how I felt, how I looked. Uh, Of course, my dad did the whole uh, hand on the forehead type deal. I took some medicine that didn't work. I took, what did I take? I took, I took Tylenol and that didn't work. Tylenol did not work. Um, but my fever ended up going down anyway, just on its own without the Tylenol. Um, 
and I'll get to why I know the Tylenol didn't work later on. Um, but then I went to work still feeling awful. Just like I, I could barely stand up. Uh, and it didn't help that the AC in my uh, work stopped working that day. So it was like 100 degrees inside. I was wearing a mask cause it just to be safe in case I was sick. I didn't want to spread it to anyone. So I wore a mask that day. Um, and I just couldn't do anything. I was weak. I could barely breathe. Uh, wasn't a good time. And I checked my temperature later on and ended up fever coming back. So I went to home. I went home early and I worked two hours that day. Um, and that night it just, it really hit me. Um, I took some more Tylenol when I got home. Um, and a couple hours later, I took my temperature to see if the Tylenol was working and my fever was up to 102. That's not fun. I mean, sure, it's still not like close to death, but it's still not fun. Other than that, it was mainly just a fever, but it was a different kind of fever than I've ever had. It wasn't just a high temperature, right? And you get the chills. Um, I didn't have the chills, but I had a high fever. Instead, my head, uh, I, I wanted to smash my head open with a hammer. It was unbelievable amounts of pain in my head. And I, I just, I couldn't move. I was so weak to do anything. Even walking up the stairs put me out of breath. I had to hold on to something in order to walk up the stairs. Um, I was like an old man. <laughs> it wasn't fun. And no, it was not just a headache. It was just a casual headache. Because when I eventually took some medicine that did work, um, it was gone. My, my, the pulsating pain in my head was gone. So technically it was a headache, but it was because of the fever. It wasn't just a headache on its own. Day three, that Wednesday. <laughs> what? I'm just thinking of the group chat. Oh. Uh, day, day, We're going to get uh, to that. <laughs> um, day three, that Wednesday, woke up with 103 fever. Felt even worse than the day before. And that day I finally got medicine that worked. I got ibuprofen. So if anyone gets it, ibuprofen at least worked for me. Tylenol did not work. Cold and flu medicine did not work, but ibuprofen did. So take did ibuprofen he, if you can. Did he try drinking bleach? Uh, I did not have any handy. Did you have type bombs? No, no. I, I hear drink. I hear like injecting bleach into yourself is actually really helpful for this. Yeah, I didn't have any other hand. Otherwise, I would have tried that. But yeah, so that's unfortunate. But Rookie. anyone that does get it, ibuprofen worked for me. I hope it works for you if you try it. Um, so every once in a while I'll have to take two pills of ibuprofen. Um, I actually still have it sitting on my desk. I need to go put it up. So, um, I've been popping ibuprofen every once in a while. Just, you know, <laughs> take the edge off. Um, <laughs> but, um, so the ibuprofen brought my fever down and I was no longer, I didn't know like I had a fever, but then I noticed a couple of other symptoms that were very, very, very unusual to anything else. I completely lost my sense of taste and my sense of smell. Uh, did that happen to me on day four? Um, yeah, day those are was the, those are dead giveaways. Yeah, I mean, if it could also through, just be like a really bad cold with a fever. No, no, no. But... it's 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 no, different it's... from just things tasting funny. Yeah, I my those two senses were completely deactivated okay. entirely. <laughs> it was not just things tasted funny. I could not taste anything. I could not smell anything. I was down two vital senses. Um, <laughs> Well, I guess in modern day, they aren't as vital anymore. But primitively, I lost two vital senses. So, yeah, that, that Wednesday was a pretty standard day. 103 fever. Took medicine every once in a while. It was an immense amount of pain. Couldn't do anything because I was so weak. Had trouble breathing. Normal COVID stuff. Day four. My birthday. On my birthday, I uh, thought I'd treat myself. Still feeling awful, by the way. Still feeling awful. Okay, same, same cycle as went that Wednesday. Thursday, my birthday. I decided to go out and get me something to eat. This is my birthday. I was going to treat myself. Got me a whole bunch of chicken nuggies from McDonald's. Nice honey mustard. Some buffalo sauce. Large fry. Large Sprite. Took the first bite of chicken nuggets. Tasted amazing. Absolutely. Mwah, magnifico. Took the next bite. I was like, that one tasted a little funny. Third nugget. Gone. Couldn't taste it. Right then, on my birthday lunch that I had bought myself to treat myself on turning 19 years old. Wait, I s you didn't turn 20? No. Bruh. I'm only 19, bro. <laughs> um, Damn. 
my okay, 19th birthday, birthday lunch, right there in the front of my eyes, in my hands. <laughs> I, right then, I saw it go away. My sense of smell, I could no longer smell the nuggets. My sense of taste, completely gone. If you, you don't know depressing until you go two and a half weeks with no taste and no smell. I just, I just love the heartbreak, like my chicken nuggies that I got for myself on my birthday. You don't understand. I, I, can, I cannot express how upset I was when that happened. Like I, I get it. It's just some stupid chicken nuggets that doesn't matter. But it's the, it's like it's just the principle behind it. Two things that people and like usually take for granted: taste and smell. Like very basic, primitive things, but they form such an important part of our lives. That, like you know, it takes up most of our time smelling things, the things that smell good, tasting things, things that taste good, eating junk food, desserts, even some healthy stuff tastes amazing. Like just gone completely. Um, and of course, it did not help that it happened on my birthday while I was eating my birthday nuggies. Um, <laughs> That's going was, in the soundboard. It was a tragedy. It was an <laughs> absolute tragedy. Like you read Dante's Inferno, you read um, some stupid thing. Like you read the backstory behind Hamlet. It just, because you know, like, backstory behind him was like saying should be a writer after his son Hamlet died. So, oh, like, hey, you no, think that's... those things are depressing? You, like, <laughs> you, no, you don't they're depressed. nothing. Well, you couldn't taste your chicken nuggies. You, you don't, don't understand. I don't care that your grandfather died and you dropped the ashes into the ocean, even <laughs> though you had not gone to the island yet that you were supposed to spread the ashes out on. I don't care. That's specific. I, Did I that really... happen? Did it happen to you? I mean, Andrew? no, so, not to me. It might have happened to someone. <laughs> I just kind of made it up. If any of our listeners have had that happen to them, let us know. We'll uh, I'm not commemorate sorry. you on the show. I'm we'll not commemorate sorry. You on the... Andrew's not sorry, but we are. We'll, we'll commemorate <laughs> you on the show. Um, Pissed, but your, your dead grandpa doesn't match up the chicken nuggies. I mean, come not, on, guys. Not lo- it was the principle behind it. Lost Unless your dead grandpa smell. is in the chicken nuggies. So Which let's is recap like, everything that's going so far. Too weak to do anything. Ha- being forced to lay in bed all day. Can't breathe. 103 fever. Um, a cough started, too. Congested cough. So that's happening. So I'm hacking stuff up left and right. Thankfully, I can't taste or smell it, so it's not as bad. Uh, I don't have my sense of taste or smell. So not only am I having to suffer through all this physical pain, I'm also having to suffer through the absence of whatever enjoyment I had left, which was tasting and smelling food. <laughs> I'm the only thing... The only, Literally, the only thing that could have made it worse if it was actually in the hospital thankfully i was well enough to stay home um although that friday night i got very worried because i still took ibuprofen and my fever still went up to 104 despite me taking the medicine (laughs) um (laughs) then i was very worried uh thankfully did not go any higher because if it went to 105 i would have gone to the hospital i would have told myself go to the hospital because for those that don't know 108 is the cap once you hit 108, your brain literally starts boiling. Um, of course, the brain water is not actually boiling, but your skin, your brain cells being, start being, being cooked. Literally. Mm, yummy brain. That's what I'm saying, bro. Had to bore the neurons. Um, <laughs> but that Friday, <laughs> that Friday, I also got <laughs> tested. I got tested that day, too. Of course, those of you who are worried about them putting nanobots or microchips through the blood brain barrier when they stick the thing up your nose, uh, I at least did not have that because I they did a throat swab for me. Are you they, sure? Are you sure? I mean, probably you, the, the microchip is telling you they didn't install it, so you know. Well, you they did. Sure. They they didn't go through the blood brain barrier up at your nose because they went through my throat. They did a throat swab. They did the sides of my mouth and they tapped my uvula. That's all they did. <laughs> Nothing else. Nothing crazy. No blood. No blood contact. I'm good. I'm not chipped yet. So you want but, to tell us Bill Gates is not in your bloodline right now? Not now. That's probably because I'm going to be executed in a town square at some point, rather than being chipped. I'm not going to waste those resources. Um, but that Friday got tested. Uh, <laughs> that day, my car also broke down. Oh, yeah. Um, still not sure why. Uh, we just jumped the battery. Like I guess the battery died, even though there was no reason for it to. So we jumped it, and it got working again. But now my camera system in my car is not working. Like I have a mirror camera and a rear camera. And neither of those work. Um, so I'm stuck with that. It's not that I need them, but it's very nice to have. Those don't work anymore. My car broke down that day, so that wasn't fun. That added to the emotional distress. 
Then couldn't go to Auburn. That was a big one. That didn't help uh, with the whole uh, being locked in my home. Sunday finally came around. I'm skipping Saturday because of the same old, same old. Sunday, I finally lost all the symptoms except cough, the congested cough. I still have no taste or smell. That's all. Oh, and the not being able to breathe really kicked in on Sunday. I now was no longer weak, like physically weak, for, to, so I could do stuff again for the most part. But obviously, since I could not breathe and I was coughing all the time, I ran out of breath very easily. So no longer did I have to hold on to something while walking up the stairs. Now I had to just make sure I didn't pass out from lack of oxygen at the top of the stairs after I'm out of breath from walking up the stairs. Um, so that happened uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That Wednesday, that next Wednesday, I could breathe normally again. Uh, Thursday, my congested cough went away. And it wasn't until last night where my sense of taste and smell had fully come back. I thought last night, I thought it was like two or three days ago. Fully. Oh, full. Back. Okay. Yeah, fully come back. It started to come back. It was a gradual thing, just like with the chicken nuggies, except that gradual thing was a lot faster. The getting it back was like over like a three-day process. Uh, and there was nothing I could do to force it to come back. It just had to happen. I'm still not sure what causes that. I don't think even doctors know what causes that. <laughs> um, which is kind of the scary part. But... uh that was my experience with COVID. I'm, I did come back tested positive, obviously. Uh, that's to be expected. My quarantine actually ends Friday. I've returned to work um, just to get it again. Um, because of the whole process again. Uh, I hope I'm immune. I hope I don't get it again. That'd suck. I do not want to go through it again. I mean, I feared that you're immune for like two or three months, and then apparently, apparently you, you could technically get it again. Eh, well, I guess but, we'll see. Like, so if you had to leave a Yelp review, how many stars would you give COVID? Um, five being not that bad, or five being really awful. Five being like, yeah, I'd get this again, man. Yeah, really epic. I'd give it a two point five. Okay, respectable. It has uh, some nice drapes, some nice ambiance, but the food wasn't too good. No, it was. It was. It was uh, to give details to my 2.5 and not, instead of giving it like a zero star it was a five star for getting to stay home and have a grand old time in my house <laughs> uh minus 2.5 for um not being able to do anything because i was too weak and i was suffering through immense amount of physical and emotional pain because of covid um the leftover 2.5 was to, obviously left over from being getting to relax at home um, yeah i think there's actually one- i want to change my thing to a one star Oh, okay. Minus another 1.5 for not getting to go to Auburn and missing any birthday yeah. celebrations. Even though I'm not a big birthday guy, I don't like celebrating my own birthday. It's just not something I do, but other people like celebrating my birthday. So for their sake, I'll go do stuff. Um, yeah, I feel that. So um, not getting to do that because my grandmother really wanted to cook me dinner for my birthday and she didn't get to because I was sick, uh, which actually I'm going to her house tomorrow to make up for that, which will be nice. So, what was the best and the, the worst symptom? Uh, the best, uh, or the most um, tolerable the most, symptom? Yeah. Uh, probably the cough. I mean, that's, that congested cough is a pretty seasonal thing that everyone gets at some point, so it wasn't that bad. If anything, it was really funny uh, hacking up my lungs on Discord with the boys <laughs> and hearing them be grossed out. I thought it was hilarious because <laughs> it's very satisfying for me to get all that congestion out, but to, but to them, it sounds disgusting. I always thought that was funny. Uh, the worst symptom, uh, despite all the physical pain I went through from not being able to breathe and having a high fever um, and just being weak in general, the lack of taste and smell was probably the worst just because it made the whole experience a lot less enjoyable because there was less things I could do to, you know, bide my time or uh, distract myself from, like, eating good food. I couldn't do that. No um, yes. Yeah. Uh, trust me, the second I got my t- taste and smell back... I went straight to McDonald's and got more chicken nuggies, I promise you. <laughs> oh, that's um, right. But uh, miss- there's uh, one thing I, I was just going to Yeah, say. you're missing one crucial detail. That COVID is actually a conspiracy to femboyize the entire nation. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, oh. what I was, that's actually what I was trying to remember. So, in the process, I didn't notice this until this week. Because uh, I talked to Jay about it, like, what, two days ago? Three yeah. days ago? I didn't notice how much weight I had lost. Because of this, because of course, 
time. Sure, I was in the bed all the time and not exercising, but I also wasn't eating. Uh, another symptom, because usually when you're sick, uh, you don't eat, mainly because you can't hold things down for this time. And I think it has something to do with having a lack of taste and smell. My appetite was also completely gone. Like, it, like I think I, w- I did a bear. I ate, I forced myself to eat something every day, and it went down easy. But I had no desire to eat. And I think it had something to do with the lack of taste and smell. And something else that I noticed is that it's going to sound weird, but I couldn't feel my stomach. You know how when you eat something and you can feel yourself getting fuller and you know when to stop? yeah. That didn't exist either. So when I did eat a lot, like the couple of times that I did, I didn't know when to stop because I couldn't feel it. So I think that also attributed to me losing a lot of weight. So I didn't want to overeat and then like since I couldn't feel it, so I just didn't eat a lot. Um, So I lost a lot of weight, mainly in muscle from not doing anything. That's where most of my weight loss went to was losing muscle. Um, a lot of it. Uh, and the next thing was, I don't think it was stomach fat that went down. Cause I don't think that's really changed that much on me, but I used to have a pretty stretched out stomach cause I could eat a lot. I'm a big dude. I used to, and I grew really fast as a kid and a teenager. So of course I ate a lot all the time. So I stretched out my stomach, um, from eating too much and at meals. But since I didn't eat anything for a week and a half or hardly anything for a week and a half, my stretched out stomach went down tremendously. So now I look and I tell Jay one day out of nowhere that because of my flattened stomach and since I do have some pretty thick thighs, <laughs> so you have. Uh, may, of course, everyone has it when they sit down, right? Like it, mm-hmm. the thighs flatten out. But even when I stand up, it's a little big. Uh, I, I'm surprised considering every other part of my body is very skinny. It's just my fat just accumulates there. I don't know why. Just the rest of my fat goes to my thighs. So that's where the conspiracy comes in. It's like the femboy eyes, uh, all, the, all the boys in the world. So you get COVID, you lose weight, your stomach gets flatter from lack of eating. Of course, you lose all the muscle. And of course, whatever fat you have gets conscious. It's like just kind of just stays in the thighs. And now I'm the world's tallest femboy. Yeah. Um, with a full not... beard and Tucker Carlson haircut. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's not that Bill Gates and Fauci want to microchip you, it's that they want to look at a bunch of sexy femboys walking around. Yes, sir. <laughs> They're just doing it for entertainment. Yeah, that's all it is. I'm the elite, I'm the elite's uh, supreme deep state, a ruling class little femboy. Which leads us to asking how much were you paid to lie about all of this and say that you had it? Um, a free meal from McDonald's and six bucks. Really? That's all yeah, it took to sell you to perpetuate a global conspiracy. Look, they said that they'd give me the McDonald's when my taste and smell came back. So, like, what else was I supposed to do, bro? But we all know that you never actually got it. It's all fake. Listen, man, you don't know desperation. It was torture, bro. The taste and smell, <laughs> that was torture. They did that they, to me. They actually took everything else away. They just didn't give you the sickness. <laughs> They put a little chip in you that takes away your sense of smell and taste for a week and a half. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, eat a McDonald's after this, baby. I, tre- <laughs> I treat you right. There's like, a, there's like a really, really loud Bill Gates voice in your head just telling you to eat some chicken nuggies after you yeah, feel that's, all that's basically what happened. That's what I went to sleep to every night with Bill Gates <laughs> soothing me. <laughs> you, did, you, did, you, you did good today, baby. You get the chicken nuggies one more week. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and you get free you, you, Windows you 11. You just need this. this oh, yeah. that's what he sold him on. He's also getting Windows 11 before everybody else. That's a true. He did say that. <laughs> um, nothing changes. Except it takes up more RAM. <laughs> and they take away the start, the start thing again. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was such a fuck up. I hate Windows so much sometimes. But uh, <sighs> no, in all actuality, I did actually have it. I'm not lying. <laughs> um, I didn't get to go to Auburn, which was uh, heartbreaking. It depressed for all me. of us. It was heartbreaking for me because um, it was something I was looking forward to uh, all year to getting to meet up with these guys. Um, hopefully, there's another chance in the future uh, that we can all hang out. Oh but, no, the uh, show's breaking up before that. This is our last episode, actually. Mm, very sad. Not that Tim could have gone anyway. He's in Germany, but uh, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. I will try to be there next year. Is it Mises? 
Yeah, I might like try. I might try to go. I won't do any of the tests, but uh. Uh, if they even let people have this thing. It was a bitch. I was just sitting around all day waiting for those fuckers to stop doing their nerd shit. <laughs> because <laughs> somebody was supposed to be there to help poison the trees with me. Look, man. It happened. But he got paid by the deep state to miss it. I got paid by the... D- I'm deep state, bro. That's all it is. <laughs> the rest state, of these bro. guys, they're, they're, sh- they're shallow state. They're like uh, above the surface state. I'm deep state. <laughs> But is there were, were there any views you had about COVID before this that changed after getting it? Um, to an extent, like I'm going to say this, and it's not going to. It doesn't mean what I what I say it means. Like I, I thought it was fake, but not in the sense that it didn't exist. In the sense that it's being overblown, and it's not that big of a deal. It's just another cold or another flu. Um, it definitely is not. It definitely is different. It's not something I like. It's not something I'd wish on anyone, just because how bad it was. Um. Uh, I mean, it's it's. I highly suggest taking precautions. Like if you're going out and po- like again, you're gonna think I'm some. This is some psyop. It's not. <laughs> I highly rec- like if if at all take precautions to not get it. Please, like if you don't want to wear a mask, at least eat healthy, exercise, get in su- get some sunlight, take all the normal stuff. Um. But yeah, it, it's it's something that should be taken seriously by every individual. Um. Don't if you don't do it for the sake. Of other people, which I still don't care about other people. Uh, do it for the sake of yourself, not go through that suffering. Even if it is, even if there's two thirds chance that you get either the not that bad one or the asymptomatic version, still take the precautions like you're going to get the awful version like I had. Uh, despite all most of the viewers and listeners' uh, opinions on the whole matter, just because the government says to do it doesn't mean you have to not do it out of defiance. Like, sure, they don't always have your best interest at heart, and they probably never do. But in this situation, I recommend taking whatever precautions you can. I'm still not taking the vaccine. I, I suggest nobody does. <laughs> well, now you're immune, so. Well, well, at least for the time being, yes. I'm not sure, because this obviously was a different type of disease, considering I lost senses entirely. And it, I, it, I still think it's man-made. I don't think it's nope. natural. <laughs> Uh, I still think it was made in a lab. I think it was released to the public as a psyop, for sure. Um, and of course, I say that even though I still encourage taking precautions because it is a very real thing. It's still going around. Do I think uh, the numbers are wrong? Yes. Do I think that, again, it's made in a lab and it's a psyop so in order to increase control or see how easy it is to control people? Yes. But is it still a real disease that you don't want to get? Yes. Um, it's, a, it's a wacky opinion. That's that's from personal experience over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah, because I, I think despite all of our conspiracy theorizing over the last few months, at no point did we say this is not a real disease. No, near the beginning yeah. we were like, yeah, don't worry about it. It's just another flu. Okay, yeah, like in in like February. Yeah, and, yeah, and, when, like, and I think at one point we did say, it's like, look, are we even sure this is real? I think we did say that like when it was really starting out over here and like yeah because like none of us yeah, had heard anyone that got uh, it or anything. I, I, I think we said that because it was kind of kind of absurd and surreal and not because we didn't really think that didn't exist. Yeah, and because the numbers of the numbers have always been bullshit. Yeah. So yeah. like, but I think as opposed to those few times, I don't think we've ever said it's not real. But I think we just downplayed it a lot. Oh, oh, for sure, uh, <laughs> and wrongfully so. Um, well, cause, I mean, for the most part, statistically speaking, I mean, you just really lost the lottery. Uh, that yeah, was entirely was just sure. the worst <laughs> because, luck like, I could have had. Like the probably most of the people listening to this, if they get it, they're probably going to fall into the asymptomatic camp. Now, I, mean, like, young, yeah. I, I or, still have I still have doubts about the asymptomatic carrier spreading thing because that comes from a very flawed study in November. From China. It doesn't make any sense considering it's a disease that re- like resides in the lungs mainly, and so if you're asymptomatic, yeah. you're not going to be coughing or anything like abnormal. I mean, you're still breathing. <laughs> yeah, you're but, breathing, yeah, but it's still. Like, and I mean, breathing is like. Two, yeah, but you're not even still two feet in front of you. Or sneeze uh, from time to time. So, but yeah, it's obviously. I mean, yeah, but usually I'm... people have the instinct to like you know put their arm on their elbow. And yeah, never wash uh, it. I, 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 like, like, uh, well, no, I have to tell a story. Uh, I was going out partying a bit last weekend and there was a stinking homeless man a really fat homeless man with like 
wrapped up clothes. He, he was not wearing shoes and he probably shut himself. And he, he didn't look, he, I mean, he was probably drunk as well, but he was coughing at people on purpose. That was really, really interesting. Well, homeless people are fucking crazy. That's one That's yeah. one precaution that anybody can take during COVID. Stay away from the homeless people. <laughs> it's something you should do in general. I, I think we've advised it really oh, early oh, on in the show. <laughs> Stay away from the homeless. They're really evil. They're they're also a Jewish style, by the way. But they're um, disgusting people. But uh, yeah, we definitely downplayed it. I mean, none of us are doctors. Despite me being Jewish, I am not a doctor. Like I'm just going off like uh, research that we've. That? How much did they pay you to, to say that I'm not a doctor? Yes. Nothing. Sure. Why would I get paid to say I'm not a doctor? So you could be a lawyer. Because maybe you're a doctor and you're on a, I don't know, just performing I think it's surgeries. Terrible, but it, what, little yeah, children so we're not in your basement doctors, and you're stealing so their foreskin. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay, anyway, as I was saying, none of us are doctors, so I mean, like, any, anything we've said like that might sound like medical advice, we're not 100% right on it. I'm not saying the WHO or the CDC or whatever is 100% right on anything. Like, we were just offering alternative views from people who do not get a voice from the state that do have backgrounds in virology and all that. Unlike the person who came up with the social distancing measures, who does not have a background in virology and got it from his 14 year old daughter's science project in 2006, but that's a different story. But I mean, the asymptomatic carrier, like that just goes against pretty much everything we know about virology, especially for an upper respiratory disease. So Mm -hmm. it's really shaky grounds. But I mean, like whatever, if you're like, if you live with family, like a lot of us do, I don't know, man. Like, you know, you can't really assess your own risk factor. Like, if you were just on your own, I would say, yeah, fuck it. If you feel like this is something that you want to catch, eh, catch it. I mean, but if you're living with family, yeah, I'd say follow Andrew's advice. Probably play it safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, you're wa- if, you're, if you're driving in your car, don't be one of those idiots that's wearing a mask in yeah, your fucking car. Yeah, don't do that. I see so many people <laughs> doing that, bro. Like, dude, one of yeah. these days you're going to have your mask on <laughs> and your car isn't going to be cooled off yet and it's 110 <laughs> degrees inside your car and you're going to die. Like, yeah. <laughs> or if you're like walking down the street and there's nobody there and you're a paranoid fucker who's wearing your mask, I'm going to laugh at you. Yeah, like, look, whether or not the mask help, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. None of us are. Some say they do. Some say they don't. Either way, if you're in a situation where a mask is going to hinder you, regardless of what COVID's, whatever COVID could do to you, you're better off, you know, being alive uh, than, uh, you know, not being alive. <laughs> being alive with COVID <laughs> yeah. than, you know, passing onto the concrete and then burning your skin off from hot asphalt. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, falling over for being at, for not being able to breathe in 110 degree weather. Remember when we were advised to wear gloves? Whatever happened to that? Is, I mean, the glove thing is kind of stupid anyway. It's just a waste of resources considering you get the gloves contaminated and still touch everything and then you touch <laughs> yeah. the gloves and it doesn't but matter. Have you noticed like people still touch their mask? Like, okay, if the mask stops you from spreading it, it then it's getting caught on the mask. So if you touch your mask, yeah, the and people you, like, who t- touch people your touch eyes touching. and you touch things, and it's like that's a lot of people because like, this is something that's actively on your face, and we get uncomfortable and we touch it. Listen, another thing about the touching the mask specifically, I think what they mean by the people touching the mask are the idiots that have like their hands like like in their mask. Because like I touch mine all the time, even if I have it on. Same. Like I'll just, I'll just like I'll touch the very front of it. Uh, and like just move it up and down every once in a while, like because I'm I'm ta- if I'm going to be at work, I'm going to be talking to customers and stuff. It's going to move around. I have to adjust it. It's just something I have to do, especially since I have a beard. It's a lot harder to have a mask on. Um, so it's something I have to do. But like I'm not like taking it on and off all the time. I'm not like rubbing the inside with it with my thumb or something. I, I'm just I'm just slightly moving it up and down on the outside. It's it's not that hard, but people are idiots and like <laughs> yeah. eat the mask, like wide up, like stick it, <laughs> pack one in their lip with it, and then take it back out again and put it on, like like it's nothing. Like don't you love when you're walking down the street and you see someone who has like under their nose, or they take oh it off to God. talk to like, somebody? Now I have to say something: either wear a mask or don't wear a mask. But please, at no point, at no point in time. Wear a mask just over your mouth, but not over your nose. That, that's the most the, retarded thing you can do. The best one I've seen is uh, over the forehead. <laughs> you know how people like put their glasses up on their head? Yeah. I've seen someone do that with their mask. 
Uh, my second favorite is hanging off the one ear. <laughs> oh that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's my that, next that's favorite. Some style, though. Yeah, that one's well, that one's kind of a fashion statement, but it's yeah. still fun. Yeah, I mean, I don't wear the actual masks. I wear neck gaiters because I really just personally, from what I've read, I don't believe in the efficacy of masks. So I'm doing it because I have this one, really it, nice styrofoam mask that has like one of those well, like air, breathing air vents in it. Oh yeah, uh, so I can breathe out, but it doesn't breathe in, so I don't get my glasses fogged up. I have one of those really nice ones. So I mean, I think this one works better than an actual medical mask, probably. Oh, probably. So if you can, plus these are a lot more comfortable because they're entirely styrofoam. They're not that string stuff that goes over your ears and it rubs your ears raw. Yeah. No, I wear the neck gaiters because I don't believe in masks anyway, but it makes my parents comfortable and it doesn't get me in trouble with cops. So it's just and they usually look cooler, kind of a cool design. They on it. they do. Uh, so I just have one. I have a neck gaiter somewhere, but it was always fogging up my glasses, so I stopped wearing it and got this one instead. I'm gonna get the one with the ANCAP flag on it soon. I'm a bit clever, but I, I don't think I should wear it in public. No, probably not. Well, you're in Germany, so... Hey, you can uh, actually get away with more crimes wearing it. Yeah, yeah. That's, actually, that's actually true. Go to one of the no-go Sharia law zones <laughs> where they are legally allowed to <laughs> uh, German women. <laughs> Jesus fuck. But, yeah, I mean, if I'm in a place where I... There's no cop standing at the door telling me to put on a mask, and I'm just walking down the street walking my dog. Like, it is fucking South Florida in July. It's humid as shit. It's hot as fuck. The sun is beating down. You bet your ass I'm not going to run a thing on my face unless I walk past the house of my neighbors where I threw dog shit at their car and got caught and had to run away. <laughs> because I don't... <laughs> but <Lucky he's> <laughs> Listen, um... they are piece of shit neighbors. They throw their trash on the fucking street all the time. Their little dogs are shit. They're rude as fuck. I will fuck with them all well, I want. I don't give a shit. This is frontier justice. So, so you're probably, so you're now using the European, European, European argument against yes. absolute private property. So when people are like throwing the trash out of their windows, just being really assholes in the neighborhood, you should be able to remove them. Yes. And that's what you're I, mean, I mean, it's, listen, if you're a person who you eat, chicken in your lawn and you just throw the bones out onto the fucking street when you have a trash can near you do you know how bad those things are for dogs when they eat them yeah like that is terrible for dogs it can kill some of them and these fuckers are just doing it on the fucking daily they are disgusting i hate them so i hide my identity from them when i walk past their house um the only other thing i wanted to say about masks is um if you're not gonna wear one when you're out and about that's fine but at least have one on you in case the business wants you to wear one. Don't be one of those people that are using yells of the business owners or the employees because they're trying to ask you to wear a mask. Not even yeah. for private property's sake. None of this libertarian stuff. Just out of genuine, like, just some courtesy. If they want you to wear a mask, just, just, wear a mask. That's just a good deal. Like, how long are you going to be in there for? Don't be a right-wing Karen, please. That's what we are trying to say. Yeah, if you're like, in a place where a person wants you to, like, if you're going to a friend's house and they want you to wear it, wear it yeah just it ain't that big of a deal like just have some courtesy none of this like i said none of this private property stuff none of this the government says so just have some courtesy like even, social... even before i got sick if, if a place wanted to be aware of mask despite me being in alabama and hardly anywhere not wanting didn't not caring about masks there was still a couple places that required a mask that i go to and they wanted me to wear a mask and i put one on no big deal nobody was hurt by me wearing a mask well or nobody was you get what I'm saying. The mask alone did not hurt anyone. Yeah. Was it an inconvenience? Yes. But was it was it too much of an inconvenience for me to yell at them and make a scene? No. But the social distancing is bullshit, and don't don't do that shit. If you are a Nobody fucking idiot, you anyway, bro. Yeah. Well, no. When I was in the mall uh, before Auburn for a few days because my mom was like looking for clothing, and the amount of anal employees that come up and start yelling at you like, "Oh, guys, please!" Re-, I had so much attitude with them. Like if there's not if I'm in a place that's not that crowded, I'll try to avoid. I'll try to do the social distancing thing because usually it's like a small dollar store that I get groceries at. Like they'll have the stickers on the floor near the cash register. I'll do that. I'll like I'll stay back and let them do that mainly because I also don't want to be close to them if I don't have to. Just out of the sake of me being an introvert with extroverted tendencies. Yeah, <laughs> I just don't want to be around people, especially people at a dollar store. You know how bad they smell. Yeah, uh, same for same for Walmart. Yeah, like, um, if I'm standing in line, I'll try to social distance just to kind of keep out of the way. Mainly because I don't want to be near them. 
Um, the funniest thing is the stickers on the floor with the arrows, like "Walk this way, walk that." To fuck those just you. make me mad because, like, <laughs> it, the, the the employees don't care. They only no. put up they get paid to put up. You know who cares? People f- actually following those rules, and it's super annoying. Don't get me wrong. I love my grandpa. He's number one person in my life, biggest role model. I love him to death. But he's one of those people. <laughs> I've never seen not for the sake that follow- he thinks that, he doesn't think that they work. He doesn't care. But he's like, if there's gonna be on the floor, might as well follow them. But the Walmart I go to, the thing that makes me most mad about their arrows is that they should like alternate them on a different lane. Because like the way people go to the store, right? They go up the right side of the groceries, go all the way to the back, where like the eggs and the milk are, and then work the way around through each aisle zigzagging through. But the way they have it is that people can still go all the way up there, but the first aisle where people would usually turn left into and then start the zigzag that way you can't enter from that side. You have to go all the way back around mm-hmm. and then do the zigzag. It's like, it's the exact opposite of what people do. Yeah, no, it's not like that here. Because when I go to Publix or when I go to Walmart, it's just arrows on the floor. And in my local Walmart, they have fasted. So only like half the aisles even have the arrows. <laughs> but the Publix, it's like, they even printed these really nice stickers to put on the floor. And it says like, do not enter, go this way. And it's like, I'll walk in. An employee will look right at me and keep stocking the shelves. Like, he doesn't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Nobody else gives a shit. After, like, three months of those being on the floor, no one has ever once bitched at me for walking down the aisle wrong. Yeah, I don't even get the point of it. Like, I mean, I guess it's for the sake of social distancing, which, again, nobody follows, especially in a Walmart. <laughs> but um, the, only, yeah. like, like, the only time those could have been useful is at the time when all this started and people were panic buying and the stores were crowded. That's when you use those. And so not for the sake of making sure people don't get sick, but for the sake of having a constant flow through the store so people can get it in and out quickly. That's what those should have been used for. But instead, they were put out months later for the sake of social distancing. <laughs> it's, like, it is the most useless aspect of an already useless measure. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Is there anything else that they've been forcing on us? Oh, uh, let's see. Lockdown, obviously bullshit. Yeah. What I, what I really fucking hate is they're like, that none of these people and of course i i understand the political incentives of the politicians to like try and threaten another lockdown because they're afraid if they don't do it then they're gonna get on they're gonna get out of office in november because somebody is gonna say look at all the numbers of infections because they're not even doing deaths anymore it's just infection mm-hmm. rates now they've they'll have deaths on the screen but they won't talk they've about com- it. yeah the narrative has completely shifted so They'll be like, look at all the infections that happened under you because you opened up too early. So I understand the politicians will never admit that they were wrong and that the lockdown was bullshit and social distancing doesn't work and none of that. They're never going to admit that. What annoys me is the normal people who will be like, why? Why did they open so early? We'd be in such a better position if we didn't open so early. And they'll completely ignore the like infections and deaths kept rising when everyone was locked in their houses for three months. It's it's the look. Eric July talked about this the other day, mainly in response to Portland, but uh, he mentioned the lockdowns and COVID in that in that video clip from his podcast. Uh, and Jay, you watched it because you sent it. To yeah, me. he was talking like none of these people would be supporting a lockdown if there wasn't the welfare state. Not mm-hmm. a single person, because they're getting paid to do nothing and sit in their home. That's what the unemployment is. Especially, it especially doesn't help with the extra six hundred dollars a week come from the federal government. Um, so of course they're sitting in their homes, getting paid at least in Alabama, 720 bucks a week to do nothing. They're going to support the lockdowns because they mm-hmm. have, there's a, they are safe. They don't have to worry about income. If anything, they're making more than they did when they had a job. Um, yeah. I, I know I was, cause I was on, I was yeah. on it for two weeks, just two, cause I managed to get another job that was still yep. through lockdowns. I managed to get another job. Yeah, so, and I mean, you saw that in states that did not hand out the money as quickly. Like, those are the places where the lockdown protests were. Mm-hmm. Whereas it states that, conservative states. Yeah, where states where there's a, already a heavy welfare state, it's like, you did not see a single lockdown in most of them. I think Wisconsin was like the only blue state with lockdown protests. Yeah, and I think, yeah, it wasn't, it was, it was in oh, Wisconsin Michigan. where they, it was, yeah, it was Michigan where they stormed the, the Michigan Capitol building. And that was the that was, worst that one. Was that was based. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, of course, they didn't care. They only strengthened the lockdown. But yeah. Um, yeah. Because that mayor is a bit. No, not that mayor. That governor is a bitch. Yeah, she is honestly, a great a cunt. That, that scenario in general is, is actually a good argument. Not necessarily against guns, but against the, the plausibility of uh, 
you know, getting up in their face because that didn't work. They stormed the Capitol building, armed to the teeth, both <coughs> with legal and illegal weaponry. And so they still, they still did whatever. Maybe they didn't oh. go far enough. Maybe they're just yelling at them didn't do enough. They didn't. Yeah, because they know, like, oh, these people are only... Yeah, they know these people are gonna, only going to come in with guns and not shoot, which, don't get me wrong, I prefer that, but it just goes to show, like, even an armed protest is pretty fucking useless. Look, if you're going to try to... Like, listen, again, none of us here support a violent revolution uh, for the sake of achieving liberty. In the sense of defense... Go for it. I'm all for it. If anything, I'll join. If it's for defense, but do not go on the offensive. Uh, or don't, don't instigate it. Um, yeah. Continue it after your, defen- your defense is done, but don't instigate it unless it comes down to that point. And if anything, the thing in Michigan is the thing of defense because they were taking away the income from their families and they're trying to feed their children. So that makes sense. But if you're going to do that, don't, don't, don't half-ass it. Go, all the, go the full mile. Um, yeah, because all they're going like, to see is you're, you're toothless. You're, yeah, if you're going to go up against the monopoly on violence, give it some competition. Be violent. Don't just yell at them. Don't just walk up in their face. Don't just send them a strongly worded letter. Send them a strongly worded letter and say it's from Ted J. Kaczynski. That's what you do. <laughs> and in Minecraft, I didn't. I didn't say that. <laughs> it's like, yes, <laughs> that's an actual threat. I could get in trouble for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but no, it's you get my point. Yeah. If you're going to go against the monopoly, give it a competition. It's that yeah. simple. I mean, you saw the same thing in Virginia in January, which feels like an eternity ago, but everyone showed up with their guns. There was a massive protest. And what did Virginia do? They wiped their they ass. They laughed with. in their face <laughs> and made the law stronger. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, the thing I, mean, I haven't seen anything from that. Does that pass? I yeah, I haven't heard any words the, out of it. All this shit started happening like a month after, so. I, I guess people just stopped paying attention, or maybe it never happened. I don't know. Oh, yeah. we, were, we were talking about this in the other episode we recorded today where it was like, remember when World War III seemed like it was going to be the thing for 2020 and war with Iran was like our biggest threat and now foreign policy yeah. feels like something a million years ago? Well, no, yeah, I'm, ta- like I'm, a, I'm not even talking about like the stuff that's like old, old news, so to speak. I'm yeah, just but, talking about like did, it, like, did that law in Virginia actually get passed? I know, but so, was it enforced? Because yeah, like, so I don't I'm remember anything sure coming out about it. Because you think Virginia would have been up in arms. No, but all I'm saying is, like, so much shit happened since then that we sort of just stopped paying attention to all these other things that are still going on because they feel like so long ago and we've been so balls deep into what's going on now. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, like, hey, an armed protest, it's really not going to do anything. Like, I've been saying, like, at a time like this, in my opinion, the only real measure someone has to keep themselves afloat really just seems to be, like, civil disobedience and counter-economics. If you're gonna like try and skirt what's going on, like even then, I wouldn't even say. Like, okay, listen, new new method of uh, achieving liberty. Stop trying. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me okay. out. Okay, you, it'll sound like a form of civil disobedience, but civil disobedience implies you're just going against a specific law or set of laws that are being enacted or, uh, or have been enacted for a while, similar to the civil rights protest. Um, and this is a more egoist way of doing things, of just not caring. Just do what you need to do. Do whatever you want. It's almost agorist in a sense, because we're contributing no, to the black it, market. It but like, is it's almost, 100% agorist. But it's not, it goes beyond that. Not just yeah. black market. Do whatever you want entirely. Just ignore it. And not just from some like black market, like higher moral ground, sitting, uh, holier-than-thou agorist point of view uh, that agorists tend to have. <clears throat> But um, <laughs> just do what you need to do to survive and protect your family. Nobody no, and, else and, matters. Yeah. And look, listen, especially with the rising racial tensions, although Portland seems to be, be gone from that at this point, it's more so just anti-federal government coming into the city, um, like they talked about in the other episode um, that was recorded today. It's nobody's coming to save you. Yeah. Nobody. So when this is going to get racial, um, <laughs> but it, it, with, the incre- with the increasing racial tension specifically and how the public eye is not fixated on class, not the ruling class versus the rule class, whatever the rich versus the poor working class, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Uh, they're not focused on class. They're focused on race. Um, and to quote Tucker Carlson or paraphrase rather, 
that segment he had on Fox News where he talked about this and how it's overpaid MSC anchors and CNN anchors and all these rich people constantly pushing race, it influences people. So now everyone's focused on race. Conservatives are focused on black people being an issue, at least to an extent. Uh, Democrats and leftists are focused on um, white people being an issue. And of course, all the other races are kind of mixed in between. Um, it's becoming a racial issue. Uh, stop trying to make it not one. It's too late for that. What is not too late for is to do what you need to do to protect yourself. So in this episode where we've talked about COVID, uh, old news, um, what else have we talked about? Homeless people, um, <laughs> yeah, racial tensions and the current events. Stop, stop trying to do all this other fancy stuff. I like, genuinely stop trying to convert people to libertarianism. I think it's too late for that. Do what you can as it comes up, but don't go out of your way. People are not focused on, they're not looking for answers. They're just looking to be mad. They're looking for an event. They're looking for a place to, exp and to put it in the words of the also gracious governors of uh, Minnesota and California. They're just looking for ways to express themselves and express mm -hmm. their anger. But that anger is going to be on you. And when it's you being attacked and harmed and destroyed and disrupted and families torn apart and borderline genocided, Nobody's going to care because it is you. So instead of worrying about others, worry about yourself. Both to say for COVID, worry about yourself. Don't, don't care if other people get sick. Care if you get sick because you don't want it. COVID is bad. It puts you out of work. It ruins your income. And it's just straight up awful. For the sake of government tyranny, don't worry about other people. Although how much you do want to, because I understand, especially with the people in Portland. As Eric July said the other day on the podcast, on his podcast, or that clip at least. His live stream, I think. Live podcast. stream. Live yeah. stream, whatever it was. Um, he said along the lines, like, why, why are the liber people, are, people are constantly saying, where are the libertarians in this situation? It's just, it's just like atheists saying, calling, like calling, using Jesus' teachings to support their claim, right? Uh, just like Eric July made the analogy of. Um, or would that be an illusion? Analogy, that's what it is, analogy. Um, they never helped us, so why should we help them? If they never yeah. gave us sympathy when government was coming down, like with Duncan Limp, nobody said a word about that. But everyone, they wanted libertarians to support them when George Floyd happened. Or we, we, although we, we supported the Breonna Taylor thing too, and don't get me wrong, we supported the George Floyd thing, but they wanted us to support it for different reasons. Mm -hmm. They didn't want us to support it for government tyranny, because they don't care about that. Because it, if it's government tyranny in their favor, well, that's all good and, it's all good and fun. But they wanted it for other reasons, but we didn't support it for their reasons. So they thought, it's like, oh, we're the libertarians. The libertarians don't exist. They're just as bad as the conservatives. They're just as bad as the government doing this. So if they're not going to be here for us, and they don't care when it's us being persecuted, uh, destroyed, torn apart, um, take, getting our incomes taken from us, uh, both through taxes and lockdowns, um, they're not going to care when it eventually when shit hits the fan and it really happens and then they're in charge and they start coming on us violently physically and actually start killing us nobody's going to help us nobody's going to save us nobody's going to save you nobody's going to save your family save yourselves yeah and i mean with basically everything you said there i have no problem at all i agree 100 percent i i just like clarify that like when i say civil disobedience and counter economics i don't mean like Everyone should get a like a Carl Hess book and a Konkin book and all that in their hands and read it and figure out the ideology and go and do whatever. I'm saying like that the only way around this is like you said, like don't care. Do what you need to do to survive. Like mm -hmm. if they want to shut you down, work. I don't care if anybody knows if they are participating in the black market or not, whatever. I don't give a shit about that. Like my advice is just there's only one way around this and it's disobey. Just don't care. Just uh, another good way to sum this up. Uh, of course, John Locke and Thomas Hobbes had two very differing, uh, very radically different uh, yeah. interpretations of the state of nature. John Locke was more peaceful, and the, mankind is peaceful in the state of nature. Thomas Hobbes was a more, um, pe people are violent in the state of nature, so we need a state. John Locke was like, we don't necessarily need one, but it's nice to have. Um, well, here's the third one. I'm not saying I'm coining this. I'm definitely not. I'm sure, I mean, anarchists have, anarchist thinkers have said this for centuries. But the state of nature is what you make it. And if the state of nature is people stepping on each other to get ahead, 
And of course, it forms a hierarchical system that is inevitable. It's going to always exist no matter what happens. Then you need to be, acknowledge that, accept it, and start. You might have to step on some people's heads in order to get ahead. You might have to start doing the things you wouldn't morally accept in order to get ahead and protect yourself. This is the state of nature. It's what it is. When people like, like all those memes and all the people who say like, "Oh, all oh, this is a the safety and comfort." Under the state is an illusion and the reality is warfare and death. That's true. That's what nature is. You see it everywhere, both in the human race and in the rest of the animal kingdom. Even in plants, it's like that. It's the state of nature. You got it. And the only reason it's a monopoly on violence with the government and stuff is because it's, they've gotten to the top and they've said, this is what goes. They're your boss. Although instead of them paying you, you're paying them to be your boss. Because that's the state of nature. State, the state of nature is not peaceful or violent. It's, it's neither. It's not with or without government. It just is. Yeah, course, peaceful, or, peaceful and violent are just two human concepts that we're applying to something that does not yeah, understand it. Like it's, it's both peaceful and violent. Like there's competition, which, is, which can be and mostly is violent. And then there's peace, which is cooperation, which there's, there's going to be both. And both of them are good and both of them are bad in their own ways. But that's the state of nature. That's the easiest way to sum it up. It's like, this is the state of nature. So yeah. whatever system, or whatever systematic way you want to do to take down the state, good luck, first off. Second off, <laughs> um, stop trying and just focus on yourself and those around you. Third, um, this has been a wacky episode. I'm surprised that we got to this point. I was on here just okay. ready to talk about COVID, and it's yeah. like we've been on here for what an hour and a half at least. Well, no, we, 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 fifty-seven minutes. We went from thing. COVID. We went from COVID to to talk about the state of nature and just not caring. Yeah. Like, and the state of nature is egoism. That's all it yeah. is. Or yeah. if you wanted to use the meme, like, avarice. <laughs> um, even though that's technically the avarice is a made-up word, but the concept is following your own desires. Which is technically <laughs> egoism, except egoism more has a post-left, like communist uh, uh, atmosphere to it. Uh, avaricianism nothing. has nothing. It's yeah. just, avaricianism is honestly avaricianism is probably a more accurate definition. If you're interested in avaricianism, it's a meme ideology that was made up on 4chan, but it still has a very good um, application to this. What I'm talking about, it's the actual state of nature. People strive for ownership. They strive to get ahead by doing whatever they need to, and I mean whatever they need to. Uh, to get ahead and please their passions. That's all it is. It's all it will ever be. It's all it has been. Uh, so there's no changing it. It's always going to be suffering. It's always people going to be exploiting each other to get ahead, no matter what side of the spectrum that the current government chooses to align itself with. One thing I'd like to add is that as a Austro-Libertarian podcast, we don't advise uh, breaking the nap. Like, yeah, please. You please to... I actually wanted to say the same thing. Please don't kill people and take the property. <laughs> yeah, I that's of course like... that's not what I mean. I don't. Yeah, like, no, I, I would I like know, for you know, not to do that. Yeah, Listen, morality we got, we got... doesn't determine reality, but but yeah, but please, please don't. Please, so, please stay some people me. that listen, some people that listen to our show need that disclaimer. Yeah, that so, is true. I mean, don't go out and kill people. Like, listen. Yeah. Like when I say, like, listen, there may be a time in reality where you might have to think about, mm -hmm. it. like, if if all the world governments collapse and there's just big nuclear war and it's actually a fallout situation you're gonna have to forget the nap you're gonna uh, if you want to survive and be alive you're gonna have to do some things that people would normally consider uh not moral um it's it's just the way nature is like we as humans look at morality as something that makes us superior because it is we do have a sense of reason we do have a sense of logic we do have that thing that other animals do not have which does make us superior to other animals in the animal kingdom. Uh, and we take that to heart, and we really strive to have the most moral society, which is something admirable about us. But if there's going to be a time where nature encroaches back on us, and it's going to throw morality out the window. I'm not saying this is the time to do that. Don't walk over to your neighbor and like kidnap their dog and eat him up for dinner. <laughs> just throw um, shit at them, that's okay. But yeah, only, only, yeah, just, trash outside. only do violence in defense. Yeah, defensive violence... Um. Yeah, it, like it, when you get to desperation, and when I mean desperation, I mean no possible alternative whatsoever. Like people rob a gas station, and it's quote out of desperation. No, it wasn't. They could have just you know 
gotten a job, did some <laughs> freelance work, or, you know, sold drugs and not robbed the gas station and maybe killed the cashier. But instead, they went and robbed the gas station and killed the cashier. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not desperation. There's other options. But in a, in a fallout-like situation where the world government's collapsed or there's a nuclear war and nuclear winter and it's it's uh, dog-eat-dog, rat-eat-rat world... <laughs> You're, you're gonna have to break a few rules. You're gonna have to, and and to quote the movie The Founder, which is uh the movie about the founding of McDonald's, which is actually a really good movie. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Um, the 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 person Such a weird who, episode. <laughs> I don't know. No, I love it. I love this episode, we, we, but it's a, it's we, very we, weird. Uh, one. Have you been for, here for one of my rants, Jay? I've been here for a lot of your rants. Oh, that's right. That's right. I've Damn, experienced your, your rants in person. That is true. Um, I'm going to quote the founder. Um, one of the lines he says is very similar to what I just said. It's like, um, it's a doggy dog, rat eat rat world. And if he sees his competition drowning in a lake, he's going to stick a hose in his mouth and put the water on full blast. Oh, yeah. And when it gets to that point, you might have to do that. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I, think I think that's, that's yeah, it's that's a good, good place to wrap to... up. Any yeah. last words, anybody? <laughs> I just want to say this might as well be not a regular episode, but part of the smoke nah, break or however nah, this, this is going up this is going up as a regular so, oh my god this, this is a little bit too retired to go up as a regular I, I, no i think no. This, i think this was a good episode so like in general like, enough. Enough. i mean it was yeah. a good one but it was also like, we, no we tim just, just like, no tim, tim just, just, just twice tim, as tim, fast tim. as we do shut up <laughs> all right uh so with that andrew any closing remarks um not really, no. Not gonna okay, perfect. Because if it gets to get you on another round, we're going to be here another 20 minutes. At least. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, if you listen on iTunes, give us uh, five stars. Or don't. I mean, give us one star. I don't give a shit. But give, please give us five stars and a review. Uh, maybe we'll start reading funny reviews. People uh, saying that for months. Because nobody reviews us. That's true. Uh, if you're on YouTube, for whatever reason, give us a like. Drop a comment. Share the show. Uh, you know, join the Discord. I don't know what else. Uh, follow us all on Instagram, on Twitter, except Tim because he's not on Twitter. And uh, thanks for listening, guys. See you next time.